welcome back to episode 26 of the Knitting Nurse Podcast. My name is Jasmine and I'll be your host for today. Today is Friday, September 24th, uh, 2021. And it's about, um, it's almost 6.30 a.m. where I am. I am here in Central Illinois. And I know I said that I was, I don't know if I said this, but I was supposed to be working tonight, um, but I was feeling a little bit sick. So um, I decided to come home early because, you know, you can't really like take care of sick people when you're sick yourself. Um, so apologies if I'm a little bit low energy. I'm feeling just a little bit under the weather. Um, I'm kind of waiting things out to see if I feel better to go in tonight since I'm scheduled, but we'll see. But hopefully um, I'll feel a little bit better. <laughs> so I decided to cozy up and throw on um, one of my knit sweaters. This is actually the first sweater that I've ever knit. This pattern is the Autumn League Pullover by the Two of Wands on Ravelry. Um, and the yarn that I use, I knit the biggest size, and the yarn I used to knit this is the, um, it's like a Karen yarn. It's the, like, it's the cotton acrylic blend cakes that they have. And it's like this pinky color. And I kind of love the way that this pulls, and even on the bottom really nice. I'm just wearing a t uh, plain t-shirt underneath it so that I can take it off when I go back to bed later on. But um, yeah, I decided to get a little nice and cozy. I have some water here with me so that because I always forget to bring water and then my throat gets dry halfway through. <laughs> mm. So I don't have any like finishes for knitting to show you guys today, sadly. <laughs> um, I haven't been really working on my socks. I don't know. I just haven't been in a sock making mood lately. I think it's been a year, almost a year of like frantically catching up with socks and I just feel a little bit burned out at this point. And there are some pattern, there are some really cute pattern socks that I really want to knit with some of the yarns that I have behind me here. But I can't because I don't have any needles and all of the socks that I have on the needles are first socks. So I'm feeling just not super motivated to work on them because I know that if I finish the sock and get it off the needles, I still have another sock that I have to cast on and finish. So that's a little, um, it's a little bit demotivating, but I'm working on them little by little. I really want to try um, pulling out a book and working on my socks while I read something that usually helps when I'm kind of in a, a stuck in that funk like this. So hopefully that'll help. But I do have a few whips and two new cast ons to show you guys. I think I am missing a whip actually, um, but it should be in like one of these bags behind me so I can cut out and grab it um, as like the last project. So first I have a whip that you guys have seen before. Uh, this is the Coastal Shawl. I'm real close to the edge of the needles there, aren't we? Okay. This is the Coastal Shawl. I don't remember the designer name, um, but, you know, it's pretty, um, it's a pretty distinct shawl. Um, I will try to update my Link Haven. I am so sorry. I am so bad at updating this Link Haven. I know, but I'm just, I just, I can't. It's a lot. The longer I wait, the worse it gets. I know. But this is the Coastal Shawl. Um, you can buy it through Knit Picks. Um, and if you go to the page where you can buy this yarn that I'm using, this is the Called For Yarn. It's the um, Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Gradient Cakes in the colorway See You Later. How cute is that? And I started with the darkest color. I was like here maybe the last time and I'm like out to here already. I just finished um, this Garter Ridge. So I'm about to, I'm about to do um, another round of even increases and then the elongated stitches. 
and it's looking so good it looks so good in camera oh my gosh I cannot wait to wear this and show it off I'm also excited to get to the next color because I'm like, I'm still like very dead in the center there, <laughs> but it looks so good. I love it. I'm loving the shawl. It's great like TV knitting, which is very easy to pick up I knit, knit a couple rows and I don't really have to pay too close attention. I just have to um, tap on my row counter. So it's very nice. I like it um, when I'm catching up on knitting podcasts or floss tube or just um, trying to watch some trashy TV <laughs> as I do. Okay, um, let me cut out and see if I can find that other whip that I forgot to grab. So give me just one second. Okay, I'm back. I finally found it. <laughs> so um, the next whip I have to show you is the Fading Point Shawl by Hohilo Catelli. And it's this beautiful fade gradient shawl. Um, it's more of a wrap because it's like rectangular, but it's, I have the start of it right here. So I think the last time I had just, I was kind of in the middle of this um, first, oh my gosh, this first lace section. And I don't have anything like solid to hold behind. So you can't really see through the lace too much. Um, and then I'm just up in the middle of the garter ridge. I'm still working back and forth to increase uh, the width of the shawl. And then after the next um, set of um, lace patterning, then I can split for the or not split, I'm not splitting for anything. <laughs> um, then I can um, just knit uh, the chevron. So that'll be super fun. I'm so excited. And I am knitting with, I'm knitting a lot of projects with this yarn, so just be warned. Um, this is the Adelaide Fiber Company, um, the, sorry, my cat's distracting me. This yarn's from Adelaide Fiber Company. Um, it's her gradient. This one is called Love Never Fades. And the color that I'm using um, first, which is the darkest color, is called Ride or Die. And it's a four ply 8515 superwash nylon blend. Sorry, my hand is shaking. And it is so beautiful. I showed the entire fade in a in a previous video video when I first got it so go ahead and check that out but um isn't this beautiful I'm so excited to work with the other colors and I have a few more of her fades because they're amazing and I love them <laughs> um I have another one that I'm knitting a project with and then I have two more that I got in the mail to show you so I did cast on two new projects, two sweaters, nonetheless, um, because I am ridiculous. <laughs> so this sweater I am going to rip back and start over, but um, I, I cast on and started the sorrel sweater. This is literally just the collar, <laughs> just like the twisted rib um, going around, but I was taking a closer look at the fit and I was looking at um, some other projects on Ravelry and I saw that some people did like bring, did um, do like a shorter uh, collar for their sorrel sweater and I think that's what I'm going to do. I also need to go up a needle size because this collar is knit with size three needles and I decided oh I'm just gonna knit this like in pattern you know whatever without even realizing that I'm a tight knitter and I always need to go up needle size especially for garments no I didn't gauge swatch by the way but it's okay but yeah um the color looks like it'll fit but it looks, just looks like it'll be a bit snug so I'm gonna rip this back and start over um and just do a one inch collar instead of a two inch collar and I'm gonna go up a needle size this is also using DK weight yarn 
and the pattern calls for two fingering weight yarns held together so there's more yardage that's being used um or that's like being I guess called for I'm not entirely sure how it is I think it calls for more yardage because you're using two different fingering weight yarns but the yardage that's being used when they're held together when you're knitting them as a DK weight is the same as if you're knitting with just one DK weight yarn plus I have five skeins and that's more than enough to knit a sweater with um I just need to you know uh, kind of figure out where I'm going to be doing my fade and the thing about the fade is that they don't really like give you specific instructions on where to fade um I watched the the fade like tips video and it was just like do what feels right I was like okay thanks <laughs> sounds cool <laughs> so um I am using another Adelaide Fiber Company yarn. Um, I'm using the Save Our Oceans Fade Set. Uh, this is in the Charlotte DK base. And the colorway is called Sea Spray. Yeah, that's right. And it's the lightest color that I'm using for the top of the sweater. So I'm super excited to rip this back and start it over again. Um, that I have been wanting to knit a sorrel sweater ever since I saw Natalie from Knitty Natty knit a summer sorrel. And I thought that those dip stitches were so pretty. And I wanted a full sweater when I saw that um, they had like, you know, different weight options. I'm like, hell yes. Give me the winter sorrel sweater. I need it. Okay, so next I have a, another new cast on, another Hohi Locatelli cast on. This is one of her more recent patterns. Um, I, okay. Anyways, I have had some, so like these yarns, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I've had these in like other blues, like a cooler blue tone. I've had a bunch of them in these baggies like stacked behind me forever. I've had them for a long time. I bought them a while ago from Hobie um, because I thought I was going to knit socks out of them back when I first like really got back into knitting and um, they're cotton. <laughs> I think I used one of them to knit a pair of socks and I just did not like it. I ended up getting rid of the socks. Um, because you don't really knit socks out of cotton with no nylon. <laughs> Go figure. So I've just had these fingering weight, like, they're really, and they're really soft cottons, too. Um, I've just had, just had these, oh my goodness. Hold on. I had to kick the cat out. Because she ran and hit somewhere, and I just have to find her and put her <laughs> somewhere else. So hopefully we won't be getting any more interruptions like that. But as I was saying, I bought these like fingering weight cotton right here, these fingering weight cotton yarns from Hobie a long time ago in like one of their um, color packs because I thought I was going to make socks. There's no nylon in the yarn. Socks did not work out. Got rid of the socks. We went over this. So I've kind of just had them laying around and they're really soft cotton. So it's not like, you know, I can't really make anything comfortable out of them. It's just... It's only 100 grams per color of fingering weight yarn. So I just wasn't sure what to do with them. But I was kind of looking at them one day and I was like, the long summer cardigan. And I counted how many colors I have. I only have six that will work together. I know I have these two back here, but they're, they don't really work with the other blues that I have. So there'll be a problem for another day. <laughs> But I was like, oh, the long summer card again. And I had been to Michael's that morning already. It was like mid-afternoon at this point. So I threw on some pants, put on my shoes, ran out the door. I sped over to Michael's and I got some. I was like looking on the website for Michael's and Joann's because I needed this yarn now. I was like, ideally I'd have a fingering weight cotton so that the bases would all match. But I couldn't find one, so I went with a fingering weight um, acrylic and 
nylon blend instead. I actually have it back here um, in this gray color. And it's just the, the loops and is it? Um, yeah, it's just like the Michaels brand. Um, oh my gosh. It's the Michaels brand um, acrylic yarn. It's wool-like. <laughs> oh, by Loops and Threads. Yep. And it's really soft acrylic. I like this acrylic. If I was going to knit, I actually have a couple of them back here too that I'm using for another um, shawl uh, that I planned for another shawl. And, um, whoa, 678 yards. That's a lot. And 100 grams. Cool. Um, and it's fingering weight yarn that is sold in a store. Like, that is amazing. And I am not a snob when it comes to acrylic. Um, I just want it to be soft and not scratchy, <laughs> basically. And like not pill up too much. I haven't knit with this yet, so I don't know how it pills or how it really behaves, but I'm willing to give it a try. So um, this is 85% acrylic, 15% nylon, so it is very shiny, but um, it's not a big deal to me. And it's color number two, which is cool gray. And I needed a cooler gray. I wish it was a little bit darker, but I did need a cooler gray. Um, for the colors that I'm going to be using. And they're like, the rest of them are back here. But I did cast on this cardigan that same day. It's the Long Summer Cardigan by Hohilo Catelli. And I only have the back panel so far. And um, one of the color changes, it's the darkest blue here. And it looks so good. And the yarns are behaving um, pretty well together. I wasn't too concerned with how they would behave together because it's only like one garter ridge for the contrast color. Um, it's not like I'm striping them and they really need to like behave <laughs> and like transition well into one another because it's a different texture. Um, so it doesn't matter too much. And it's like not, it is only one it's only two rows back and forth so it doesn't really matter too much as long as the ends are woven in properly so let me gather all the colors i have the rest of them just put away so that i don't accidentally use them for something else because i am prone to do things like that so i got these in like a set from hobie it's like the blues like set um it's still up on their website too so if you're interested on the website this camera blows out blue so much this is not as bright but um i bought two of these sets so that's why they're all in two different balls um oh my goodness so that makes a hundred grams of each of these colors which i probably don't need i'm pretty sure i need less than 50 for the size i'm making but this is the darkest blue that i'm using and then I gotta pull all of these out <laughs> to make sure that I have them in the right order. Um, this is the next darkest. And then this one. And these don't really have like color names, they're just numbers. And that one. This one I'm probably the most worried about with clashing. Um, with the color, with like the main color, but I like, I held them up next to each other and then the last color is white. So as you can see, there's only six colors. So I'm only doing six of the repeats. I'm just lopping off one from the bottom because this long summer cardigan is very long and I'm kind of a short person. So I thought like, oh, um, it's probably a good thing that I have to lop off one of the color repeats because this probably would have been past my knees otherwise. <laughs> and um, I don't love like cardigans and sweaters that go like too far down, but I do like, um, you know, over garments that cover my butt because it's cold out here. <laughs> Even in the summer, in the evenings, it gets a little breezy. So 
I need like if I'm wearing a like a cardigan or a jacket I need something that covers all the way down so hopefully um, these will work out uh, and that one color that I was worried about won't blend in too much with the main color but I think I'll be okay I held them up next to each other and they look like they would be fine um, when they're both like in balls but even then I think it'll still be okay if they blend in a decent amount because it's kind of a gradient so you'll be able to tell and I think those are all of the whips I have to show you let me get a drink of water real quick Yeah, so those are probably all the whips I have to show you. I do have a little bit of yarn haul besides like these <laughs> that I just showed you. Um, I have, what else? No, there's nothing. So I grabbed them. I have two new fade sets from Adelaide Fiber Company. So I forget what this one is called. I think it's called like the Find Your Way um, fade set and it's purple. <gasps> it's purple look how pretty this is it's all still in the package um i don't know if i want to take them out of the package this time just because it's kind of a lot <laughs> so i'm not going to pull these out of the package but this one is beautiful and i'm going to knit i'm going to knit the moth wing shawl out of these and it's going to be so beautiful and i cannot wait and then next, I have her other fade, the newest one. I think it's called like, it's Autumn something, like Autumn Emergency or something like that. I don't know. I don't look at the name. I saw the colors and I needed it, but it's like yellow and orange. Oh my God. Isn't it so beautiful? I love it. I got the DK weight set because I wanted a sweater out of this and, um, Knitting a sweater out of fingering weight sounds like torture. <laughs> I feel like I'd be stuck in stockinette land forever. So I kind of want it to go a little bit faster and I'm going to use a um, sweater gradient recipe that I found. Either that or I'll just like use a plain Jane sweater that calls for DK weight and um, measure out my fade that way. So like you measure out my fade using the gauge in the pattern. But I do plan on knitting a sweater with this. It's probably not going to be for a little while. So um, yeah, sorry. I have a lot of stuff cast on and I'm out of project bags. So I have nowhere to put the yarn even if I do want to start something. But this is beautiful. I love it so much. And I'm not taking these out of the package yet either. Um, when I start the new project, I'll probably take them out and tell you what the color names are and everything, but this should be available in her shop by the time you see this um, in a wider variety of bases. I had already planned on getting the DK weight base and it was in her shop already, so I just went ahead and got what was left, but I think that she's, I think she's updating her shop. Um, if she has it, then she's updating it very soon. So it's so gorgeous. I'm so excited for all my new yarn goodies and Christmas is coming. So my yarn advents are coming like in a couple of months. I'm so excited. I have two that are coming, but I think I'm going to buy a third, um, at least one or two more, uh, like last minute, just cause they're available, <laughs> um, with my next paycheck. So We'll see in one week. Oh, can you believe it? One of them that I really want to get is the Ruby and Roses yarn because I love her yarn. I love her dyeing style and I want all of her yarns. So um, I'll probably get the advent calendar and then I'll make another order of just some random, <laughs> some random skeins to add to my collection. Okay, so that's enough blabbering on about yarn. I need to clean this mess up around me <laughs> once again. Um, also, apologies for not showing any socks this week. I did not work on any socks at all. I think I talked about 
how I'm just like not really feeling socks right now. So apologies if you like seeing my socks, but I'm not liking seeing my socks right now. So I didn't even touch them. There's really nothing to show, but I'm going to clean this mess up and I will come back with some cross stitch. So if you're into that, stay tuned. And if not, then I will see you next week. All right, so I gathered all my cross stitch stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys um, the most unwieldy project first. That's my sampler September piece. It's the Twisted Band Sampler by Northern Expressions. So I'm gonna try to hold this up because it's still in the frame and it will remain in the frame for all eternity. <laughs> but um, I have the pattern attached on the other side so I'm trying not to show that. So here is where I'm at. The last time I showed you guys, ugh, I just had like half of this bottom, half of the butterflies done, and all of this was done. So I did the first band of specialty stitches, the first like half of, half the band of specialty stitches here, and let me just readjust, and um, I finished that color, so I'm on to the next color. So as you can see... Those are the specialty stitches in that band. And I'm doing rice stitches right now because it calls to do those um, before doing the other ones on the outside and on the inside. Because um, the what the scallop stitches and the rice stitches will cover up the holes that you need for the rice stitches. So I went ahead and just did the, the large X's like over four first all the way down so that I could make sure I, ke I kept count. And then I'm going in and doing like the smaller X's in there. So there's my Twisted Band sampler. Isn't, it, isn't she gorgeous? I worked on this like all last night, basically. All that progress I did was in one night. Can you believe it? I can. <laughs> okay, uh, just there you go. Whew. She's unwieldy. But I'm getting very close to the, to the corner and then I can cut off um, the excess fabric. Yay. <laughs> okay. So next, uh, I'm going to show you my biggest project last. So next, this is my most recent start. Um, I think I'm not going to have any more new starts for a little while. Oh, no, that's not true. I'm getting my Needlework Expo order that I pre-ordered from Jesse of Miss Light Pages. It's probably being delivered today. Cause it just got to the post office like at three in the morning so it's probably getting delivered today well we'll see a girl can dream you know even though i'm probably not going to start them till like saturday or sunday <laughs> but yeah i'm not gonna have any more full coverage new starts we'll say that for a while because i have a lot right now but i started this looks like a whole hunk and oh it's sideways this just looks like a whole hunk of nothing, doesn't it? So this is a pattern I bought on Etsy a long time ago, like when I first um, discovered the Too Good Buy patterns on Etsy. And this is a full coverage piece. It's um, like the Lion King movie poster, just without the Lion King like words. Um, I'll try to put a picture up on the screen, like probably covering my face, but this is the start I have on it right now. It's not too much, but it's 1%. So I'm comfortable putting it away for a little bit. It's very small. It's a petite, itty bitty little thing. I'm stitching this on some scrap um, 25 count fabric, one over one, full crosses. And you can see over on this side, there was a project on it. Um, this used to be, what is it? Um, this used to be the freebie disintegration pattern that I downloaded, except it was like this way, I think. Yeah, except it was this way. Um, but I decided that I really only got that pattern because it was free. And because I didn't really put much work into it, I decided that I was just going to abandon the whip and use the fabric for something else. So that's exactly what I'm doing. Mm. Yeah, this is a small pattern. It's like it's like six by ten inches or something on 25 count. So it's not very big, but I'm enjoying it. There's only like 
40 or 50 colors or something in it for a full coverage so that's not a lot of colors so I am liking it and it's kind of fun there's a good amount of color blocking in here which is the opposite of what I had been doing so that is always fun <laughs> Okay, next, um, I have a small-ish project that I was working on. Like, let me take this Q-snap off. Um, that I was working on, like, last week for, um, during a Zoom call. Um, so, uh, God, I have to explain this <laughs> every time. It's just a lot of words to say out of my mouth. Sometimes they don't come out right, but um, there's a fundraising event for a movement called MMIWG2S. It stands for Murdered and Missing Indigenous Women, Girls, and Two-Spirit People. And it is um, basically an, a movement to um, bring awareness, to bring community awareness to the number of indigenous women, girls, and two-spirit people that end up missing or murdered um, at a rate that is disproportional compared to other demographics in North America. So um, Michelle Bendy, Michelle Bendy Stitchy, um, Resist Stitch Alicia, and Erin from Two Martini Stitcher, and now Rachel Ray. Um, they are all, they've all kind of come together and started a fundraiser for this whole event called Marathon for MMIW G2S. And um, the, all the proceeds are going towards the Coalition to Stop Violence Against Native Women. Uh, it's the name of the fundraiser. And I have their website linked below if you want to read more or donate to them directly. And my donation page for the fundraiser is also linked below. My YouTube handle is spelled wrong. I'm well aware. Please don't make fun of me. <laughs> my real name is spelled right. So at least I got that. But um, on Sunday, there was a Zoom meeting because September is also, uh, like September and October is also, um, Jesse of Mislaid Pages, Season of Smalls, Stitch Along, um, where basically you stitch small cross-stitch projects for the months of September and October. Um, so this, so this Zoom, this past Zoom was themed around the Season of Smalls. So we all kind of got together and we stitched on some smaller projects. <laughs> And I chose this adorable succulent snail pattern that I found on Etsy. I've been wanting to stitch it for quite some time. I just never got around to it until now. So this is where I started. Um, I moved my Q-snap before like I started stitching anything else. But I, so if you don't know me in real life, I love snails. They're so cute. I have been like thinking about um, buying pet snails and setting up a little enclosure like in my craft room or my bedroom or whatever <laughs> just to have some pet snails but anywho um, I started stitching this really cute snail pattern um, it's gonna have like succulents like on its back like the rainbow succulents up here and I did like the slug portion of my snail um, most of it during the zoom and then I finished it um, in the days afterward. So the snail itself is done. I just have to get the succulents in, which should be a lot faster than the snail because it's basically just blocks of color. So I'm excited to get that to get that done. And um, yeah, I just need to, you know, get working on this at some point probably um as my I think instead of working on full coverage I'm going to work on this as like my kind of secondary project for this week because I would really like to get this done and hung up in my home because I want I need there are just not enough snail things in the world okay 
and it's a crime. I'm going to petition that we have more snail paraphernalia and it needs to be more common <laughs> and more accessible to the general public. All right. I am tired of having to scour the internet for snail stuff. Although, um, in the Zoom, I talked about how much I loved snails. <laughs> and um, Alexis from My Amazing World, she also has a YouTube channel and an Instagram. Um, she suggested that I get the Owl Forest embroidery, Owl Forest embroidery um, patterns. Uh, they sell them as kits, actually. They have like the snail houses patterns and they're snails with houses on their backs. Oh my God, they're so cute. So, um, and they're like plant themed. So I got all three of them and they're coming. They've been shipped and they're in transit and I'm counting down the days until it leaves Russia and it gets to the United States and it is in my hands because I need to start all three of them. So like, and the funny thing is like, <laughs> she mentioned it in the Zoom. I was like, bet. So I like during the Zoom, I whipped out my phone and I bought them like, they were like, my payment was confirmed within 10 minutes of her mentioning them. <laughs> and then like a couple days later, she was like, oh girl, I totally forgot. Like I, like these are the patterns I was telling you about. And she sent me a link. So I'm like, girl, don't even worry about it. They've already been shipped. <laughs> I'm ridiculous. I can't handle myself. But yes, those patterns are on their way. And I also got a cute little snail, um, what is it? I call them graham crackers because the ones I have are like long and flat and they have the holes on the floss holder, like the floss organizers. But this one is shaped like a snail. Oh my gosh. But enough snail talk. I could talk about how much I love snails all day long. So next project is my focus piece for the marathon for MMIW G2S. And it is, I'm trying to make sure I'm holding this right. Cause I, in my viewfinder, um, I'm flipped. <laughs> Even though you guys can see me in the right orientation, I can't as I'm filming this. So I have to be a little bit conscious, but this is my focus piece. Um, I'm pledging 100 hours towards stitching on the super size max color of stitching shell, um, charted by heaven, heaven and earth designs. And the artwork is by Amy Stewart. I have to rehearse that in my head every time. <laughs> but um, I'm still on page one. But I'm very close to being done page one. Yay! <laughs> so these first three columns here are completely finished. These next two columns are... I have like a few ninja stitches left that I have to fill in. And then most of the stitching is really just over here. And these colors are different than what's over here. And that's why I've just been picking colors from the top um, going this way in each column. I've just been picking colors from the top down in each column and um, color completing in the page and parking over here in the next page. So some of these uh, threads are parked and some of them are um, away knots for like ending my thread without having to flip it. Because this piece of fabric is enormous and I don't want to have to flip my flip my frame and fight with this fabric every time I have to be start or end a thread so I am basically um pulling a thread up from the bot this is my back so basically pulling a thread up from the bottom um and because I'm doing a I'm doing this on 25 count one over one full cross so because I'm doing full cross um I'm able to anchor my thread really easily I just do the first cross and it's like in place I'm fine so these hanging threads here um I don't have to worry about it at all especially because like if I ever finish this um I'm getting it professionally framed 100% and um so basically it looks so different when I'm like back this far oh, looks so good. Ah. but um I have like all these cherry blossoms here finished and then up here is mostly done. This is like kind of the 
the edge of the like archway and then there's like some leaves and stuff and some petals in here the key the top of the key is here and then there's the very edge of the actual door right here um so that's what i have to finish and then i'm going to go down instead of over because this piece is um longer than it is tall it's like wider than it is tall so i really want to um give myself a little bit of variety in my stitching and go work downward um along the piece so this is all that's really i mean i say all but like this is what's rolled up at the bottom I don't know if I'm going to be using all this fabric. I have to get down to the bottom to see. But yeah, I mean, the edge is a little bit warped because it's taut in my Q-snap, but it's not a big deal. And I'm trying not to, I'm trying to be careful with like my tension because you can't tell by looking, but I can feel there's like bumps like in each column. So I have to be kind of careful with like some of the heavier confetti areas um, and like maintaining my a good tension and stuff, but it looks really good. I love it. I'm excited to get down to this bottom page. Um, I'm close to about 40 hours. Um, I'm probably going to, I feel like there's like something, there's not. I am probably going to, um, Stitch more on this later today so yes I can get up to 40 hours and donate another ten dollars towards my cause oh yes so I'm excited I am feeling super motivated now because I'm like I feel like I can taste this page finish <laughs> um there's not a lot of like single ninja stitches over here just because it's so dark it's not really color blocking it's like it's like a lot of the same color just like dotted all around so I guess confetti but not like insane like single stitch confetti like it is over by the cherry blossoms so that is exciting I'm not going to start any new full coverage pieces until I get at least 10% in another one of my full coverage cross stitches that's my goal. For every 10% in one piece that I complete, I can start a new full coverage. I can kit up as many as I want, but I can't put any stitches in them. <laughs> um, because I have all these boxes up here. These four boxes at the very top that are full of cross stitch whips and kits and kitted up projects. And I am going to need another box to fit everything else that I have. I know. I'm awful. But it's okay because I'm having a blast so that's all the cross stitch I have to show you guys today um, I don't oh, I did oh there was something that I forgot to show you guys last week okay hold on one second okay so I just went ahead and grabbed a couple of projects that I have kitted up one of them is a kit that I bought one of them is something that I kitted up recently I don't have the printed picture but I'll insert it um, up on the screen at some point but I plan on starting the Ingleside Imaginarium um, which is Familiar's Sal. This was a Sal from last year but I just bought the full pattern because it looks so good. It looks so cool and I really want to start it so I'm using um, I cut up the 32 count um linen that I got it's like this you know slightly modeled gray the back is just like plain so it's like printed on the front and it's really nice um I think the model is stitched on picture this plus marquee but I just had this lying around so it doesn't clash too much with um the grays that are in here and like this light gray I think was the one that I was most worried about it calls for um, 169 and you can see it on there but it's I looked at the chart and stuff and on the pattern and pretty much all of that lighter gray is surrounded with um, darker colors or it's backstitched so I'm not too worried about that 
The two colors that I really want to sub out are these two. These are the only two blues that are called for in the pattern. Uh, 3766 is this lighter one, and then 3845 is this darker one. And I want to replace them with um, DMC at 12 because there's only two skeins of them, and a 12 is a little expensive. I thought about doing black, but it calls for five skeins of black, and there's a lot of black sipped in this pattern. So I'm like, uh, maybe not. Maybe I'll do the blues instead. So they don't have those exact colors in the Etoile, but they do have comparable colors that I think are still going to work together because the two blues are basically like, are basically just accents in the piece and I want them to be sparkly. So I'm going to go and whenever I'm ready to start that, I'm going to go grab the two Etoile colors that I need. Okay, the next kit that I have to show you is something that I bought and I was so excited <laughs> to get it. I haven't started it yet because I just have not had the time, but you guys, okay, if anyone knows me like IRL, you know that I am obsessed. I'm obsessed with Les Mis. I love Les Mis. Oh my god, I I am due for a re-listen to be honest and this pattern is the perfect pattern to listen to while I'm stitching. So I bought this kit, this is just a paper pattern, um, it's from Taylor and Cromwell on Etsy. They have a lot of different um, musical inspired patterns but this is the Les Mis one. <laughs> you guys, it's, oh my goodness, I saw this and I just started singing. I'm not going to sing for y'all right here because you don't need to hear that. <laughs> I'm not trying to wake up anyone's pets or anything, but look! Oh my gosh! Ah! Look, it's so cool and it came with everything. So it has this cute little floss card with all the flosses. It's like wrapped around the fabric. And it's like on black Ada, which is pretty much the only black fabric I'll stitch on, unless it calls for specialty stitches, which it doesn't. So it's kind of a, she's kind of a big girl. So also the fabric is surged. But this is how big this fabric is. Ah, it's 14 count Ada. I think it's in the wrong orientation. I'm pretty sure it goes this way. But it's 14 count Ada, that's why it's so huge. So, but still, girl, I am so excited. I'm so excited. I can't wait to start this. Oh my goodness. Just pulling this out like makes me want to start it immediately. But I need to get caught up on my MMIW hours. So, <laughs> I got a stitch on my stitching shelf. And honestly, like, my stitching, like stitching on the stitching shelf, there's so much stitching that I'm saying, but the stitching shelf pattern that I'm working on, it's very motivating to work on because uh, there's a lot of confetti and it kind of just, which each color I complete, it just keeps coming together. Like, oh, just one more color, just one more color. Like, oh, this color is like, there's not a lot in here. I can just knock it up quickly and park it. Oh, but there's a lot of this next color and it'll really make the, like, I'll see more of the image come alive and then I can just park it. And I just, I just cannot stop working on it. I think the last time I sat down to work on it, I did four and a half hours in like one sitting. Yeah. But any hoosies. That's all I have to show you guys today. So, um, my Needlework Expo pre-order should be coming soon. So I'll show you guys those patterns that I bought next week. And I shouldn't cast on any new knitting projects this week. Shouldn't. Um, I plan on restarting my sorrel sweater and doing just a shorter um, neck. So hopefully I can do that this week. And I will see you guys in a week, next Saturday. That's all I have to show you guys for today. So um, I'll see you guys next week. I hope you stay safe and you find joy in everything you're working on. Bye.